Now, let me give you this, you know, random story that happened. All right. I was dating this girl. She had a little bit of basic, the equivalent of community college. Lovely, lovely girl. You know, the entire community college, part-time mom and all that. And her dream was she wanted to work for a hedge fund. I'm like, like Goldman Sachs, right? And I'm like, you know, she's, I, I adored her, but I'm like, don't you need more than like community college to work for Goldman Sachs? I don't know. But you know, I'm trying to support her. It's like, cool, cool, that's, that's all right. But she's vivacious, she's spunky, she's a go-getter. And so she gets this job interview with some sort of hedge fund equivalent in the local area. And you know, she wakes me up, it's like, okay, you know, it's, it's time to go. I'm like, what? It's like 6 a.m., why, why the fuck are you waking me up? It's like, yeah, you gotta come with me and show more support. I mean, if you cared, you know, you'd come with me, right? If you really cared about me, you'd come I'm like, really, you're pulling out the guilt trip? All right, fine, all right? So I go, we take the train, and we go to this really nice hotel. There's like 50 people. She's dressed in this lovely kind of power, feminine power suit that we got for her at H&M. And there I am, I'm basically in my pajamas. <laughs> I'm basically in my pajamas. And I'm just, I got my iPad, I'm like, this is, I am so miserable right now, I should be asleep. But there, you know, there's 50 of them, they're all in their suits. And I'm sitting down with her and like, you know, this, these two guys come up to me, one's Indian, one's Asian, you know, East Asian, all right? The Indian guy's tall, decently well-dressed, decently, you know, well-spoken. Uh, the East Asian, he basically went to something like Oxford or the you know, Ivy League equivalent. Yeah, um, you could, looking at him, seemed like a nice guy, very, you know, very, you know, quiet. But he was wearing what I call his dad jacket, his, his dad suit coat. You know, the suit coat where, like, literally, you're wearing it, you can't even see your fingers. Like, he borrowed it from his dad. All right, that's what it looked like. And so he's like, they recognize me. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm just here, just, you know, showing moral support because I care, right? And, you know, it was like, you know, so um, we're talking, we're talking, and they start to bring everybody in. And this is like 50 people, so they got to eliminate people fast, all right? They got to eliminate people fast. So when they ask kind of out-of-the-box questions, you know, to display your personality, all right? And as, um, as I guess, as an employer... You know, this is a, a bit of a tidbit for you guys that will be job searching pretty soon. Your resume already says how awesome you are. The fact that you guys are going to University of Pennsylvania, it already says that you're awesome. Or going to Wharton, it already says you're awesome. As your employer, I don't care how awesome you are. I only care how are you gonna make me money. That's what an employer wants you to know. How are you gonna make me and my company money? All right. So. As hours wear, you know, wear on, I'm like still there on my iPad, you know, tinkering away. And people, you know, come out of the elevator one by one throughout the entire day. It's like 5 p.m. I'm like, my God, will they just, you know, hire or fire? I'm like, let's get this going. At last, she comes down, and she is one of the three hires of the entire 50 group. It's like, what happened to everybody else? You know, what happened to the, the two, two guys that were sitting down with us? It's like, oh, the, the Indian guy, he did all right. He got like, you know, medium level, the mid, mid tests. But, you know, they eventually moved on. And the, the, the Asian guy with the really big coat, big jacket, he got eliminated right off the bat. You know, it's like, well, why? Well, you know, like one of the first questions they asked is, why should I hire you? What are you going to do for me? And like, she, you know, again, I, I don't know why she wants to go to a hedge fund because I assume you need like a business degree, but she's just going like, yeah, you know what? If there's something I don't know, I'm gonna go out and find it. If I, you know, if I can't find it, I'm gonna get someone who knows and I'm gonna get him to do it for me and do it for you. All right, she's just hustling. I was like, I'm a hustler, I'm a hustler, <laughs> right? And he, you know, the poor, poor Asian guy is just like, I don't know why you should hire me. I went to school, I made good grades. You know? Next question was something like out of the box where here's a broken iPod. Cannot play music, <coughs> but this is your product. How are you gonna sell it? And she's like, fuck, <laughs> you know what? It's like it's a broken iPod. It's like, you, you know what? This would be great for kids, right? Because it's too big to swallow. 
All right, and you know it's, it wouldn't be too hard to like you know you know if you threw it at somebody and it's got dials and it's got lights and it's got numbers and so they could play it as a, as a children's toy product. And you know thinking outside the box, go to the Asian kid. It's like I'd fix it first, right? But that wasn't the question. If this was your product, a broken iPod, how would you sell it? All right, again. Just a random kind of story that, that happened that I thought was very interesting. Right? Again, you know, I'm not saying that all, obviously all Asians are going to encounter this. But start thinking, like, people judge you, especially when it comes to the job interview. First impressions are made within three to seven seconds. Various studies that show that your spoken word only matters about 7%. 38% is your tone of voice. 55% your body language. Different studies put the number in different areas. But overwhelmingly, the nonverbal communication always overpowers the verbal communication. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And it's not what you know, it's who you know. You know, in a study of hiring managers, 67% would not hire you if you failed to make eye contact. If you did not smile, you fidgeted too much. They, that would be reason for them not to hire you. Your first impression was unfavorable. Your first impression was someone that lacked confidence, competence, just someone they wouldn't want to be around. Other, there's like, you know, Far more sort studies when it comes to reasons why they wouldn't hire you. Bad posture, a weak handshake. I'm not gonna name names, but quite a few guys came up to me with their handshakes and I was just kinda quietly judging. Who was <laughs> like, oh, okay, let's, let's get a, like a, a nice two pump right there, all right? You guys gotta practice that, that executive handshake. It's a two pump. It's not like, eh, it's, a, it's not like that. It's like, firm, how you do, okay? It's easy. <laughs> Um, crossing arms, playing with hair, too many hand gestures. All these things. It's like poker. Who plays poker? Come on, we got some Asians here. We know we play poker. <laughs> we do have some Asians here, yes. <laughs> um, in poker, I mean, obviously not online poker, but in real poker, there's something called like tells. Things that say that you're nervous, that you're bluffing, that you have a weak hand or strong hand. This happens in real life, whether it's in the arena of getting a job or in the arena of dating. There are certain things that you do that display that you're not confident, that you're not a confident, fun guy, but you're a bullshit artist, right? So, <coughs> there's the, the, the Asian poker face. And this was interesting, the fact that um, Wesley, when he heard about this, this is the reason why he decided to include me in that massive magnum office of his on racial angst, right? The Asian poker face. Who's that had this? You, 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 you go to a party, and it's like a mixed party. It's like with your, your white buddies or whatever, right? <laughs> you go to a party, a frat, a frat party, right? Whatever, and you're chilling. You've got your beer. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm cool, yeah, right? And you're chilling. But then one of your buddies, <laughs> One of your white buddies, he comes up to you, he's like, dude, dude, are you angry? Are you upset? Why are you angry? Who's ever had that happen? Yeah. <laughs> it's called the Asian poker face. It is because, and they've done witness studies, and there are studies all about this. People of different ethnicities have a harder time differentiating your emotional state than if they themselves were exposed to that ethnicity for a significant amount of time. It's like how, you know, we as Asian can be like, oh, you know, that, that, he's from like Korea, she's from like Japan, and like Gareth is like, what the fuck? You're all Asian, right? All right, people of different ethnicities or races have a harder time, all right? And it, it you know, it de definitely reflects in the dating arena. I generally employ, we try to employ women in our programs to kind of be like the, mother hen, the wing woman, you know, to, to help them practice talking to a beautiful girl. And one of the most common things that like Sarah or Claire or whatever, 
will say is like, you know, the guy's not smiling, he's just creepy. But like some of these guys are really the nicest, friendliest people, all right? They're cool, they're great people to be around, but because they have that Asian po poker face, which is like, <laughs> she thinks serial killer, right? <laughs> so it's very important to have a wide display of emotions. It's very important. Even from a psychological point of view, when you have different facial expressions as you converse with somebody, let's say your boss, they're more likely to trust you, right? They're more likely to trust you if you have different facial expressions as you speak, as opposed to like, you know, talking to somebody, you've got a big shit eating grin all the time. You know, at first it's kind of cool, then it just kind of becomes kind of creepy, right? Um, so I don't know. I don't know if there is a bamboo ceiling, per se, right, in the professional arena. But let me ask you this. Let me describe somebody. Let me ask you if you think this person is, in your definition, successful. It doesn't have to be like the epitome of success, but you know, would this person be successful? Let's say this person, this Asian man, is in his mid-20s, maybe early 30s. He's a high net worth individual. Six figures, entry level occupation. Owns or in the process of owning a home, drives a luxury car. Is college educated, either, either in some sort of technical field or has a nice professional title like doctor, lawyer. You know, middle line management, works on average 40 to 60 hours a week. Would that person be, you know, in American society, be considered successful? Yeah. Right? That's what most of you guys are aiming to be. Right? Let's be honest here. Who wants on an entry level job to make six figures? Right? Entry level. Right? But guess what, guys? <laughs> That's my demographic. That's whenever I go to San Francisco, guess who my clients are? These you know, high six figure, sometimes millionaires that work for like Apple, Google. I mean, last month I had a one-on-one -on -one with um, like someone from Apple. Um, he was like a millionaire. He worked you know, like with Steve Jobs personally. Apparently, Steve Jobs liked to call people idiots to their face, you know. But that's my demographic. When we go to Seattle, it's high net worth Indian computer pro programmers from Microsoft, right? So what happens? Essentially, and again, you know. This is a broad statement, I realize, but it will apply to many. It's a high value beta male, someone who places the pursuit of financial, educational security over emotional intelligence, leaves many unprepared for not just professional arena, but also the modern and changing dating arena. Again, it applies to many of you, not all of you, but enough of you. So, let's Get a snapshot of Asian American sex, relationships, and marriage. At the age of 18, Asian American students reported that 72% were virgin. Okay. That's compared to 33% black, 45% Hispanic. Is this male and female? Yeah. But <laughs> Asian males have the highest, according to the journals, 18.1. Now, 31% of Asian men by the age of 18 have lost their virginity. Well, 40% of Asian American women have lost their virginity. Okay. Essentially, Asian women are more sexually experienced than Asian men. <laughs> Asian American women have had more sexual partners than Asian American men. Asian American women have dated more partners than Asian American men. I'm not making this up. You guys can look up the different sexual journal, you know, statistics yourself. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to be higher now? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>